So here I have a little tiny miniature painting that I'm gonna do and I just roughly sketched in some mountains, a couple of trees and a stream or river whatever and bigger tree here and some snow banks and then there's some ice at the edge of the stream there. So first I'm gonna put some water in just over the mountains and the sky. I'm gonna treat them as one for right now because uh, that way it's gonna push them back and that's what I want. You know, so there's the water on there, and I'm just going to put a little bit of a blue on. That's cobalt blue, and then don't want it that strong. Cobalt blue, and a little bit of peacock in, and I think there might even be a little bit of, of uh, indigo in it. So I'm just going. That's the sky and the mountains there in the background, like that. And I like it a little bit lighter there where the mountains are. And then while it's still wet, I'm going to go in and get a little bit of quinacridone red on here at the bottom. Bottom. So that's going to go into the mountains there. The other thing I can do is I can go in and I'm going to go in and put a little bit of water on some little bit of water like this in the open part of the stream. That's going to be darker and it's going to reflect the sky. So let's do that. And I'm going to make it darker than the sky. And I'm leaving, you know, the reason I put water on is I want to have a little bit of white still showing because the stream is flowing. That's why it's not frozen in here in the middle. Of course, there's, you know, current. So let's put a little bit more of the dark in especially underneath the snow banks and maybe you know if we have a few little white sparkles maybe you know there's a little bit of ice flowing or something who knows we don't know these things there so that's a good beginning yeah we're just gonna let that dry so here's how our little landscape dried so far and I uh, just mixed myself a little bluish purple very watered down little wash there and I'm gonna go in and just with put a little bit of water on my little my mountains here and you can see that red that I put in and it just kind of lit up into the sky, which was what I was kind of hoping for. So now I'm just going to put a very, very thin glaze over the mountain areas because, you know, I don't want them too dark. And I want it so that you can see the color transition underneath this unifying glaze, so to speak. But, you know, I don't want it too dark because, you know, I'm having some darker evergreens also. So I don't want it to be as dark as the evergreens that I'm going to paint in. So here's that. So now we have the mountains established back there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a tiny bit of burnt shinna and I'm going to take a little bit of that cobalt blue, a little bit of that purple in. I need a little bit more burnt shinna. I'm trying to gray down the cobalt blue a little bit like that. And I'm going to put that on where the ice is here on the edge of the water and the snow. That's ice here. We can put a little bit of the purple in also. I want it, you know, too, too gray like there. So it's got to be lighter than the water. And it's like here. There it is. I think I want to pick up just a little bit here. Maybe got a little too dark. No, it's going to dry lighter. Okay, so that's the ice and we got the mountains painted in. So now we have to let it dry before we can go to the next step. Okay, I made myself a cup of coffee, cappuccino and everything dried. And now it's time for me to get some color on the snow. I've got a little bit of my cobalt blue out here. The reason you might see other things on my palette is because, you know, I've been painting other paintings in between. I usually paint on more than one painting at a time. So I have a little bit of cobalt blue there. Let's take a little bit of quinacridone red, make ourselves a nice watery lavender for the snow. Very watered down. You know, we want it to still read like snow. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water on. Let's see, first I have this snow bank here. A little bit of snow way out here. So let's just define that. And even though snow's white, you know, if we just paint it white, it's not gonna look, it's not gonna look right. So we have some bank back here and it's darkest at the bottom and then it's lighter at the top so I put a little bit of water in and then I ran the color in and then I'm just dragging it out towards the top so the top is a little bit lighter like that and that's you know defining the snow banks in front there I think that's good and we can uh, skip one and then do this one here so I want to vary it a little bit and I'll just see how I'm just running that in from the bottom Then I'm rinsing out my brush stabbing it and then I'm just pulling up that pigment so that it becomes lighter and lighter. Rinse the brush in between as necessary. So we'll get a nice light top there. Lift out here a little bit so we can see like that. That's good enough. And we can do it on the other side here and we can just go through that tree big tree we're going to paint here of course that tree is going to it's going to be a lot darker so we don't have to worry about it it's that rinse my brush and then just uh, there that's good enough it's safest if you do a little bit of water first just so it doesn't run away from you there and 
put it on like that and rinse out and you know it's going to dry lighter than it looks and then I want to keep more white as we get move forward a little bit wider as you can see here so it's a little bit more defined the back ones that bleed into each other more and that is absolutely perfect so like that and then we have one bank here and this one I want to say that there's one little bank behind here so since that's a little area I, I just did it wet on dry and then I right away go in with a damp brush and just kind of lose that edge like that and maybe take a tissue and just lift up a little bit there. And then we can do that last little one. Put a little bit of water in. And then some of our snow color. So again, that was cobalt blue with a little tiny bit of quinacridone red. Or you could use a pink. That works too. That's the color that I usually use for snow. I think that works out pretty well. And let's do this other side. Be careful of those drips on the ferrule that sometimes appear and then drop right when you don't need it. That's happened to me more than once. And again, I'm not going to worry about the tree in front. A little snow color on here. And then I think I want it a little darker down here like that. And then just let it fade out here. That will be almost white up here. Of course, I want to have a nice contrast to the dark tree that we're going to have. I run a little bit more color in right here in the corner. And pretty soon, you know, we have a nice... And then here... I'm going to just divide this area into two, and I did it wet on dry. Should be able to loosen that up. And again, lift it out and move it out. There, I want to have a little bit wider here too. So I'm just going to take my tissue and just kind of dab some of the color out like that. And then we just have one more lift, a little area down there. Give it a little bit of water, and then let's get our snow color. Get it spread around and leave a little bit of little bit of white right there. And then here in the corner, I'm gonna run in a little bit more just because I don't want people to look there too much. So don't want to have a white area there. So you can see I started out with cobalt blue in this green mix that is made from yellow and indigo and I watered it down and I painted in those evergreens here. They are closer to us than those here. So I painted these trees in. So let's do the same right here. We have a couple more trees here that are also in front of those but behind but, but about the same maybe a little bit forward. Maybe a little bit forward compared to those there but pretty close the same distance so just have a couple here and so just we want to vary the color just a little bit not too much and let's start with this one so you can see it's much easier when you put a little water in first see then they go in front of those and they'll be darker All you need to have is that the edges look like evergreens and then you're good. So we'll have them go down a little bit so they kind of, you know, define this snowbank here. Looks like looks like they grew a little bit. That's okay. And I want to put another top here because I think this one got so fat. And you never want to have them stop right like like right on the mountain. That's not good. It's not a good visual. Okay, I think that's good. And then we just have the big one left. And then we're going to put a little bit of extra um, shadows and stuff like that on the banks and on the snow. And maybe a few little grasses sticking up. But uh, it's beginning to look like a landscape. So everything is dry. And now I'm going to put this big evergreen into the picture. And it's coming up from underneath this, this uh, little berm of snow. So I put a little bit of water in. Not too much. And and now we need a really dark green, not too watered down. So I'm just jumping around my little puddles here. I think this is about right. Let's try it first. And see by putting the water down, I get a little bit of flow, kind of get me started. And you can see it's important that it's darker than those other trees so that first of all, it can cover them up. And second of all, so that it really truly looks like it's in front of them. It'll be darker and bigger. Again, it's perspective. And the color is dark enough to cover up those little lines I have and I very try to vary the color a little bit and now I have to remember that it just goes down to here there it's just a little line to remind myself so I don't get carried away and just get the outer edge of this Christmas tree disappears down behind this edge and now it's just a matter of getting those edges to look good 
like that. I think this is pretty good. Yeah, it's a little skinny up here, so let's give it a little bit more pizzazz. Okay, I can live with that. And the last thing we need to do is just uh, give our land snow banks and stuff a little bit more pizzazz. So I'm using a, that snow color and I'm just gonna go in and darken a little bit, like right down here on the edges. And I feel I need to make this here a little bit more like that. And then I'm gonna soften the same here. I'm gonna soften a little bit and here. Just to give it a little bit more shape. I like that better. And we need a little bit of the same thing going on over here. Let's start with this one. So even though it, though it's snow and we all know that snow is white, but it's still, you know, it's not just plain white. It has shadows and stuff, and the shadows are usually, not always, but usually kind of bluish or purplish on snow. The way I see it every, anyway, I mean, we all see things differently, so, you know, if you see it a little bit differently, that's okay. So just put a little bit on back there. And so I'm just going in and reinforcing the shadows. Yeah, I think that looks good. And we need a little bit here. Be careful that I don't get into the green here because I'm not sure that's completely dry. We really want that to bleed out. And let's do a little bit more. And this is also a, t a time when you can kind of fine tune the edges. If you have some edges that you weren't too happy with here in the snow, reform the snow a little bit if necessary. I'm gonna go up and just do a little bit more shadow there. Let's take a look. I think it's uh, getting there. It's getting there. A little bit more right here in front and here. It goes out onto the ice. So the last thing we're gonna do after a just lost the edge here. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna also give that sheet of ice that's at the edge of the stream. We gotta get have to give that a little bit more pizzazz. And so I'm thinking, mm, let's see, try to put a little bit of the green over here in this purple. Just I want a dark bluish grayish color here. And I prefer to uh, mix it from the colors I already have. I don't know if you could see that here. I'm dabbing around over in that snow shadow color I had with the cobalt blue and a little bit of the uh, methadone red. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of darkness kind of on the snow banks here where it's hitting the water. So like that. Just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. And it has to be at the bottom of the sheets, not on the top of the sheets, if that makes sense to you. Let's take a look. I think that did help. And then here, I feel I need to kind of straighten that out a little bit and then lose the edge on the top. Just trying to fine tune a little bit. It's such a small little painting, you know, no need to go crazy. Okay, let's see. Whoops, you can't see here. Yeah. I think that reads pretty nicely. I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take my white gel pen, smooth it so that you can see it. It is this one here, and it's a white gel pen. It's made by Mitsubishi Pencils, and it's all the text is in Japanese, which I don't understand. So it's a Uniball Signo UM-153, in case you're interested. And I'll have a link for you in the description below the video. So I'm just putting a little bit more white markings in because, you know, I wanted to say that this stream, either this has some ice floating in it, or maybe it uh, there's a stream, I mean, it's it's running fast over pebbles and stuff and I could also I had a little bit of a boo-boo with the green here I could kind of fix that and I could also if I wanted to go in and do a little bit of snow on top of some of the branches here on this evergreen that's in front I think that could be good because it's such a solid dark I don't really like that too much so I think I'll have to go in and do that and it's just some little scribbles that's all it is and sometimes you have to maybe practice your scribbles to make them look like good scribbles but just think about how the snow is on top of the boughs on the evergreens so like that I like that I think that's pretty good and then again we have a little maybe fix fix, fix it here I always put a little bit 
white gel pen if we have areas that need a little bit of sass, a little fixing, like that. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna call it done. And now comes the fun part. That is pulling off the tape and reveal the white edge around. And this is why you have to be really careful that you don't rip your painting. So, you know, pull it like gently away from the painting like this. So careful, careful, careful. That and one more. And there we have a nice little winter landscape. It's a little bit more detail than what I usually put in these little landscapes, but I think it turned out cute. And so now I just have to sign it and then I can frame it. I frame it in these uh, big reclaimed barnwood frames. They're really popular up here. I have them in two of the galleries that I'm in. So anyway, have some creative fun and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already to my channel here on YouTube and also I want you to know that I have more and more classes over on my Podia Eva Nichols Art Academy site and some of them are free and I'm moving some of my YouTube videos over on my Eva Nichols Art Academy site as time allows and that will give you the option to watch my YouTube videos without being interrupted by commercials because that's getting more and more prevalent it, it feels like to me anyway here on YouTube and us creators we have no control over that just so you know the rules changed a couple of weeks ago and YouTube can put their commercials on any channel even if you haven't monetized your channel they have that right and we don't have any say just so you know so anyway be creative be cheerful and relax with a little painting <music>